to here it is time for another GI Joe toy review uh, today as I am doing all month uh, we're looking at the Arctic figures celebrating Arctic month in December it's kind of a tradition on this channel even though I've been up for only a year it's it's a tradition uh, there's so many Arctic figures out there, you know, I, I figure I could stretch this out for a few years. Uh, we're going to be looking at um, one of the least popular, I would say, figures from the 86 line. I'm only saying that because there are a lot of them available on the aftermarket and the prices are relatively inexpensive. Uh, we're going to be looking at the 1986 Iceberg. Now, Iceberg was out on the shelves from 86 to 87. Then he was discontinued for 1988. But I, I say he has a two-year run from 86 to 88 because there were still figures on the shelf in 88. It only makes sense if he was discontinued in 1987. Uh, people would still have them, um, retailers would still have them out on the shelf after that. So I would consider that a two year run for him. Now, Iceberg was first retailed at $2.99. Uh, he was a part of the fifth wave of G.I. Joe. Um, there was only one other iceberg available in the vintage line and that was in 1991 and I have an example of him that I, I will show you and there were only a handful of them out there there were four of them 86 um, 91 97 and 2013 and the 2013 um, version 4 was a um, very nice looking figure. It, it looked, they made it after the version one, which is pretty nice. There are a lot of really good colors working for him that I, I'm going to point out. Uh, there, there was a variant on his file card or on his card back. One came with mm. the um, camouflage paint the face paint that came with it and the second one was the Sergeant Slaughter promotion. Now I have an example of his full card back. Pretty neat and I'll, I'll get more into this but uh, on the back of his file card it doesn't show the sticker so it was either peeled off or somehow slipped by when they put those um, stickers out. Or had those promotions available. Don't really know how that works, and I'm not going to work, waste my time trying to research that because it's really not all that important. Just a slightly vexing question. So uh, Hasbro also had um, mm. Iceberg available in 1991 through Hasbro Direct, as I had forementioned. So that goes to show you that he, he was an overstock. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of them weren't selling and I'm sure that the retailers were sending them back and uh, therefore Hasbro uh, took them back and resold him through Hasbro Direct. And that's kind of unfortunate because I, I like this figure. Um, I like the underdogs, but he has some really cool colors going for him. And I think just in my harebrained mind, kind of an educated guess, the reason why he really wasn't selected because he came with one accessory. And as a kid, I remember if the G.I. Joes came with a lot of accessories, I bought them and kind of steered away from the ones that only had one accessory. You know, it just in the mind of a child, quantity is quality. <laughs> so, 
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. Okay, so here he is, the 1986 Iceberg. Let's go ahead and bring him in just a little bit closer so you guys could see him. Now, uh, this is a silica package. Uh, they come, it comes packaged many different forms. Um, this one just happens to be in a um, little plastic container. A friend of mine, uh, New Jersey Ed, I've uh, been a friend for a few years now, he gave me that tip about um, storing silica with your action figures to keep them from yellowing. And it works for vehicles too, so I have a silica package stored with him. So let's go ahead and take a look at his weapon. It's a fairly big, fairly tall weapon. Uh, it looks like it should have at least a bipod on it. Uh, this looks somewhat like uh, either an M60 or a um, a Browning automatic rifle, a BAR. It's a very long handle. Uh, good detail for for it being such a long weapon. I mean, they, they really got into this. And I always found, found that to be kind of weird, you know, <laughs> such a, a tall weapon, but of course roadblock, or not roadblock, just roadblock, but um, rock and roll came with a really long gun as well. So let's take a look at Iceberg. Um, if you guys want a good action figure stand, these right here, I got them from smalljoes.com. They work the best. The peg is just perfect. Uh, I bought an off, I should say an off brand, but it looked like one that was just um, made by an individual. Bought a bunch of those and the pegs are too big. And I cracked some heels. Didn't make me too happy. But fortunately, I had spare legs for him. So, Iceberg version 1. Uh, very cool looking figure. I, mean, I, I love the light blue vest that came with him. That really pops. Now, he has some green gloves that have a little bit of um, fur wrapped around them. Uh, looks like he might be wearing a snowsuit. Uh, wearing fur lined snow boots. Has straps around them to keep the snow off out of the boot. Nice little utility belt wrapped around him, painted green. Has some pouches that go all the way around. Uh, of course, he has this pistol. And they did skimp on the painting on that. That was pretty cool. And they painted the pistol and the holster. And what is G.I. Joe without a sculpted on grenade? Looks like he has a smoke canister as well. Has a nice little pouch right up here on his right shoulder. Sculpted in zippers. If you could see that or not. There they go. Some nice sculpted on zippers. And the harness for his holster goes all the way around his back. And he's wearing a fur-lined cap and has some sculpted on goggles. And uh, he has this patch on his arm that I think was also on, uh, on the Battle Bear. It's kind of G.I. Joe's Arctic patrol patch, I would say. So, let me pull out um, version one or version two. You could see there is a vast improvement with him. I mean, this is the best version of Iceberg. 
out there and arguably one of the best in the vintage line period why because he came with this very cool snowboard and being the 90s they had those nasty old weapons trees so they took the weapon from blizzard took his rifle his pistol They used muskrat's machete. Why an arctic troop needs to carry a machete is beyond me. And they used hit and run's knife. So it looks like they just needed to throw all these accessories out to the kids and get them to buy it because like I said with a kid quantity is quality. And he also came with a rocket launcher and two rockets. I'm not going to review him just yet. I'll save him for a later time. But uh, the rocket launcher works still. Uh, we knew how to make things in my day. Not the cheap stuff that falls apart these days. But if we would have had, I think, as a kid, if my friends and I would have had the snowboard with Iceberg, I think that would have started some fights. Who got to play with him? It's bad enough we were arguing over the Crimson Guard. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at his card back. Very nice card art there. Uh, it shows here that he's wearing a fur coat. Which, uh, kind of a missed opportunity on that, but I guess the technology of the day, they couldn't really sculpt that very well. Shows him carrying his nice gun and uh, interchangeable snap-on, stay-on accessory. And a fully posable modern army figure. And on the back, we have several cells with figures from... 85, 86, some from 84, you know, Storm Shadow up there. And uh, very nice. And somebody had uh, clipped out the flag point on there. I was fortunate enough to buy a bunch of, buy a stack of card backs, and I think I got them for like a buck 99 in an auction, which wasn't bad at all. And I have the full. For, I have his file card, which did not come with this card back, but this was purchased at Toys R Us. <laughs> Knocking down my display again, my background, but I'll uh, just show you briefly. That's what it would have looked like. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Oh, uh, let's go ahead and read his file card. This was the first release of the file card, so it didn't have H1 on it. It says, code name Iceberg, Snowtrooper. His file name is Nash Clinton L. Serial number RA271655660. Mil primary military specialty is infantry. Uh, secondary military specialty cold weather survival instructor he's from brownsville texas so they're sending another guy who lived in a hot state out to the cold and i understand that <clears throat> i understand that very well you're tired of the heat you want to get where it's nice and frosty and you appreciate it he is an e5 he's a sergeant so that would make sense he's a sergeant named he's an instructor Uh, middle paragraph I relate with. Iceberg hates hot weather. <laughs> yes, he does hate hot weather. He made his debut in the five-part miniseries Arise or Pentor Arise. And he was standing on the steps of a building that was, I want to say, the Kremlin. And uh, he was out there talking with the October Guard and, and Duke, and he said, oh, this weather isn't anything like Texas. And I think it was horror show that says, you know, this is a beautiful spring day. 
So um, it continues in in Brownsville in the summer. You could spit on the sidewalk and watch it sizzle. Pretty much the same with Arizona. So I really relate to this dude. While other kids saved up for bicycles, Iceberg saved up for an air conditioner. Again, I understand him. When he was old enough to enlist, he signed up and asked for duty in Alaska. He had found his element. Qualified expert M16A2, M79, the M60, and an M1911A1. So I'm thinking this is the M60. Bottom paragraph reads in quotations, We have plenty of cold weather specialists that can stand the cold well enough but very few that like it. I'm sure this has come from General Hawk. Iceberg, Iceberg's just not happy until the mercury dips below zero. Again, I, I agree with this dude. This is, not, this is not to say he's unaware of the dangers of cold weather or that he is impervious to the lethal effects of hypothermia. Rather, his love for ultra-cold climates has forced him to learn every aspect of Arctic, Arctic survival, end quote. So, you know, I could totally relate to him. I think that's the first file card that I ever could relate to uh, with the um, action figure. And it doesn't seem so weird, you know, like Dusty being a refrigerator mechanic. Or repairman and he works in the desert iceberg like me lives in a hot state hot and humid Arizona does get humid now and it's it's miserable in the summer and we pray for the cold weather so I think if I would have been um, selected from the military, which I was out, they wouldn't take me because my right shoulder is bad as you can see, it kind of slopes down. I had an injury when I was a kid and had to have it reconstructed. Um, I, I would have enjoyed the cold weather um, maneuvers as well. And uh, the last time I was up in the snow, crud, too many years to count, almost 20 years, as I was in my first year of respiratory therapy school. We were out for Christmas vacation, flew up to Idaho to see a girlfriend, and uh, oh, I was just loving the snow. I was going, going outside in a jacket, uh, just like a kid in a candy store. You know, and they're looking at me like, why are you wearing that windbreaker? You know, it's 25 degrees out here. Yeah, that's why I'm wearing the windbreaker. But anyway, let's get back onto the topic here. Uh, I I really do like Snowbird ver, Iceberg Version 1. Great figure, great color scheme, great sculpting on him. He is a cool figure, a lot of fun. I played with him a lot as a kid. I just wish he came with another accessory. Uh, maybe a knife. They could have given him a knife back then or a set of skis. They knew how to make skis back then. Last year I reviewed the Arctic Guile and Guile from the Street Fighter series, one of the few that I have, came with a pair of skis in the same color as Iceberg's vest and I posed Iceberg on those skis. I had him displayed and it looked really good. Why couldn't they have done that then? They used Blizzard skis but they could use snow job skis for him. So several missed mm. opportunities with Iceberg and they made up for it with version 2. When I review him I'll, I'll cover more on him. There's a lot to talk about with him. So let's go ahead and get into my favorite segment, Byron's Gripes. 
not much to gripe about here. There's some outlandish prices that I'll get to. But if you want a loose, complete action figure, $6 to $16.96. Really got to watch out for yellowing on him. Check out the condition. If I were to pay $16.96 for him, which I didn't, I paid around seven. Um, watch out for yellowing. There are some for sale on the aftermarket right now. He is so yellowed he's brown. It's like a kid just left it outside and I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Um, a complete one with the file card $16.99 to $17.94. Six nine did I say sixteen ninety nine? Six ninety nine to seventeen ninety four. Yeah, I wouldn't really pay seventeen ninety four for him. Unless I was really desperate to get it. Uh, like I said there's a lot of them out there, so just be patient. They'll, another one will come around. His file card is selling anywhere from two ninety nine to eight dollars. And I would not spend eight bucks on that file card. I just would not. It may be $8 for a Cobra Commander version 1, or Baroness, or Destro, some of the older ones. Yeah, I would pay that much, but for somebody like Iceberg, no. Carded, 60 bucks. Okay, that's pretty decent for a vintage carded action figure. Now, if I were a, a carded collector, yeah, I think so. I think I, I could justify that. But $259.99, absolutely not. What are you thinking? $259. It's not even graded. Uh-uh. You think you're sitting on a freaking gold mine, man? Do your research. His gun, four bucks. Now there are guns available out there. This is the only one. Watch out, make sure it is white. <laughs> the um, accessory pack, um, I think it's accessory pack number four came with a gray gun, which would work with him. It would look good with him, but his original gun was white. So uh, keep that in mind. White is right for that weapon. Uh, loose with an AFA rating of 80 I think this is um, bogus I don't think you can I'm not an expert I'm not an expert on getting toys graded I don't know if they would give an 80 rating for a loose figure but $67.11 I would be real hesitant with that. If you do know, if you are a person that sends your merchandise out to get it graded, or if you just know about the AFA toy gradings, <laughs> let me know down in the comments. I would really, really appreciate that. Because right now, this seems bogus to me. So um, just do your research on that one. <sighs> yeah. So, I would say the deal of the day on this guy, complete with the file card, $6.99. And it was a pretty decent looking figure. Once again, it's just check for the yellowing. Check to make sure he has the right rifle. And um, condition is everything with these guys. If I pay a little bit more, it's going to be because it's in very good condition. Um, I don't care about the vintage o-ring being in it or not um, it doesn't bother me if it has the vintage o-ring some I heard the other day somebody at the toy store was saying well are the o-rings vintage I only buy them if they have the, the real <laughs> o-ring those things are just gonna rot okay if that's your deal cool whatever works but O-rings aren't that big of a deal. I look for condition. 
and uh, especially with the, the white, gray or blue, make sure there's no yellowing on, the, on that plastic. Uh, now the ice, there's an ice, several of them out there that come without a rifle or file card. Those prices go from $399 Twenty dollars and sixty-nine cents for a loose iceberg, and just my feeling, somebody saw it out of thrift store or a flea market or whatever, and knew it was GI Joe. Mm. And in people's eyes and mind who don't collect GI Joe, see GI Joe and think, "Oh, it's valuable." Yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, yeah, there are pieces out there that are very valuable. The Red Hiss tank, of course, the Sears exclusives, uh, the Dreadnought uh, air assault and ground assault, of course, that was a Sears exclusive. Uh, Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander. There are several variants that may uh, uh, the value on the action figure. The Viper Pilot is another one. That's the the value is just in his is um, sigil if you just have just a little fleck of silver just enough to prove that he's a viper pilot prices go up on him okay so there you have it guys some outlandish prices 259.99 for a carded action figure. Sixty dollars is the lowest for the carded. That's a bargain right there as well. I mean, <clears throat> these are the fixed prices out there. I give these prices to you guys so you, if you're for getting back into collecting. Uh, that was the big thing with me when I was getting back into it. I didn't know what was a good deal. That's why I do this little segment. Um, so you know what to look for in prices and know what's out there. It's not to make fun of those individuals. Just some of those prices are just insane. And that's why I don't give their screen names. I don't want to single these people out. Just the insane prices. And I do make fun of them for the fun of it too. You know, just add some entertainment value to the show. Uh, I remember I was blowing up um, HCC788's email asking him these questions. How, is this a good price for this? Is this a good price for that? And he was so courteous, so gracious, just a good guy. Um, he helped me out with it, and I, I really appreciate it. So I'm turning, returning that favor to you guys. So if you don't know, tonight is HCC788's um, live stream. Head over to his channel. Uh, that starts around um, 6 o'clock uh, Mountain Standard Time. And I think it's like 5 o'clock in Oklahoma. So I'm to stay tuned around around those times. It, you know, check your time zone for that. Yeah, so check that out if you haven't. A lot of people attend that. There's a lot of very good discussion going on, and it's it, it's worth it. So check him out. Um, I want to congratulate everybody mm. who was the winner in Half the Battle Timmer's um, annual charity drive. Uh, he holds a charity drive every year, and. Um, for children's charities, you pr uh, I donated a um, dragonfly or a tigerfly helicopter complete, and the uh, winner should have should be getting it tomorrow actually. So um, very glad to do that. Uh, it's for a children's charity. He the goal was a thousand dollars. We just exceeded that. It was fifteen hundred and change. So it was very nice that all of you participated. I really appreciate that. Um, also, um, if you 
so choose uh, check me out on coffee leave me a one-time tip I would really appreciate it this channel could use some support uh, also head of, uh, support me on patreon uh, for every patron um, there will be special giveaways held for those patrons for an exclusive patron exclusive giveaway and those will be some premium toys that I'll be giving out on that channel or um, for the patrons and uh, yeah, I um, just want to thank you guys all for tuning in. I really do appreciate everybody who has stuck with me, who shares these videos, who leaves comments. You guys, this channel wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And this is all for you, and I, I really appreciate you guys doing that for me. Um, also, it's cold. It's cold out most most of the country stay warm stay dry especially stay dry i uh, don't want hypothermia setting in wouldn't hurt to carry a reflective vest in your car some extra blankets road flare snow chains you just never know guys you know white out condition you could be stuck on the side of the road for a long time and you know you run out of gas out there and your heater won't work after that out here we have brownout conditions uh, get a really bad dust storm. It's called Haboobs. It's just a wall of dust, miles high and miles long, and it just whew, visibility is sometimes just up to the, to the hood of your car. It, it is incredible seeing those. It's nuts. Um, so we we get a good dust bath. So anyway, guys, no more further jabbering. I really appreciate you guys. This has been Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. Have a great day. Be kind to animals. Say hi to people. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.